So let's have a look at this interview where the author, Wolf, uh, gives some of his ideas. He's very careful as to how he says things, but nevertheless, he sticks to his point. Yeah. If someone accused me of a Christian being a Christian asshole, like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I am. Um, and I hope that the term can be a rallying point for people to say, no, we're not going to be passive. Um, no, no, we're not going to let civil power just be, you know, be, be taken by uh, something that's ordained by God for people's good to be seized by people who are, you know, believe absurd things, not even false things, but just utterly absurd and destructive things. I mean, it seems it's such a pertinent time, like God's providence and the the timing of this book coming out, especially when you're talking about a national will and uh, you have a desire to move people. You write that in the book that you really want to compel people to take action. A Christian place uh, is something that Christians have to bring about. And I think what, what happened is that in, in America, it was assumed for for uh, decades, um, centuries, that we that we are a Christian people, we are a Christian nation. Uh, um, and this was just kind of the default understanding, especially in the 18th and 19th centuries. Uh, and then uh, the neutral world hit, that is this idea where people, you know, the, the secular powers are kind of ambivalent and let you do what, let you do and say what you want. Uh, but now we're in the midst of a negative, a negative world, whereas there's the, there's an act of hostility towards Christians. But in order to, for civil institutions, for, uh, for civil government, civil society, it's a matter of us saying that's what that's what this is going to be. We're going to make a Christian government, and it's going to be us um, willing that into existence. And it's certainly high time to do it. It's high time to take action. You actually define Christian nationalism in the book, so let me just read a definition here, and then we'll talk about that a little bit. Christian nationalism is a totality of national action consisting of civil laws and social customs conducted by a Christian nation as a Christian nation in order to procure for itself both earthly and heavenly good in Christ. People in a Christian nation would do that would conduce to their good. Um, and But I focus in on, well, how, how are those ordered? How do we determine what those things are? Um, and that one of them is civil law and, one, and the other one is social customs. So civil law is is just something that the that we're we're basically um, com ordered to do by the magistrate uh, for our good, uh, and so this is everything from you know tr speed limits, uh, and I think also Sabbath laws, uh, and then then and we can I mean we can get into more on that. But, we're gonna have to but, because but, yeah. you just took people they they were with you with speed limits, yes, yeah, but they yeah. lost you on Sabbath laws. Yes, yeah, but we'll come back. Sabbath, That's all right. Sabbath laws. I mean we haven't got it's a to teaser. For... Haven't got to blasphemy yet. Um, blasphemy <laughs> laws. Um, in uh, exercising dominion over the earth, we are not, nor, nor, was Adam, nor would Adam have done this, we are not bringing heavenly life to earth life. We're just maturing earthly life according to the human nature and the principles of, the, of this life. So how do you order people, how do you order Christians uh, to eternal life? Well, you, in, in an outward way, you, uh, you do what you can so that they can worship God and worship God uh, and uh, the, the church can administer word and sacrament. Uh, and how, in particular, how would you do that? You'd have Sabbath laws, and Sabbath laws uh, are not to simply to punish violations of fourth commandment, but, they're provide the, to, but to provide the conditions in which people can worship God without distraction. That's the purpose. The purpose is not simply God says fourth commandment, that's bad, so therefore we punish. That's not what, what I'm saying. We do that because the fourth commandment is is essentially saying that we ought to worship God corporately um, with with His people um, on a on, on Sunday or a special day, and so uh, the civil government is there. How, how are you? How can the civil government, in an outward sense, contribute order you to that? Like like as I said, you re they remove the distractions of that day so that you can focus in focus on the worship of God. So Martin, there you have the basis of his thinking, and uh, I think he missed something there. What did he say right at the end? It's not part of the yeah. video here. One of the means also that the government can do it, he says, is 
by silencing them. So, so you silence the, the other party. The other party. 